Let me tell you something now. In a few years, your laptop will look like this. All laptops will look like this. And just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, this picture tells a million words. Yes, that XPS 15 in the middle is a 15 inch laptop. And you would be excused for thinking that that is a 13 inch compared to two 15 inch laptops or 16 in the MacBook Pro. But it's not, it's a true 15.6 inch laptop. But you don't have to wait to buy a laptop that looks like this. You can get the Dell XPS 15 9500 now. And just have a look now at the Dell XPS lineup. Woof. Now, does anyone else have a line of laptops that look like that? Now, it looks of one thing, but is this laptop any good? Well, let's find out. Now, as you can expect, a new cutting edge laptop like this, yeah. It's going to cost you. Latest price is in the description there. It's not cheap at the moment and you can't even pick it up on a sale. Dell are doing end of financial year sales. You won't find the XPS in there. Maybe back to school. I don't know. They're expensive, especially here in Australia. And this isn't the end of my Dell XPS journey. I've actually got more videos to come comparing it to the MacBook Pro 16. Upgrade video advanced setup video where I just basically blow away the factory image and I'll put a new fresh windows image on it especially if you're upgrading you might as well do this and this is a good chance for you to upgrade to windows pro in the description I have a link where you can pick up windows 10 pro and office 2019 cheap with a discount code and the reason I do this is because I find when I put my own image on there and I just select a few apps that I want from Dell like Premiere Color, Dell Updater you know, the Wi-Fi driver, I find that I get better battery life and just, you know, it's a more smoother experience, you know. They'll put a lot of stuff and then there's McAfee and stuff, yeah. We'll get to that in a later video anyway. Will I turf my Mac for the new XPS 15? Let's find out. So the model I have here comes with Intel's 10th generation 10750H processor. That's a six core processor. You can get an eight core i7 and you can also get eight core i9. Mine has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 2933 megahertz. If you are gonna upgrade your RAM, which I will have a video about soon, I'll leave links to RAM that's actually even faster, 3200 and suitable SSDs. And this also comes with the GTX 1650 Ti. I have the 4K touch model. There are two models here they're both 16 by 10 displays full hd plus and the 4k touch which i have here 100 percent adobe rgb or is it we'll find out they both have a 35 millisecond response the ultra hd uses 10.4 watts and the full hd actually uses less than half i think it uses 4.4 watts so undoubtedly you can see how sexy it is you can see how well built this is actually if i'll compare it to the macbook pro even though it's super sexy and it's super small and compact I think the XPS 15 can take more of a pound in than the MacBook Pro. I think it's just because of the gauge of the metal. You know, the base plate and lid are like twice as thick as the MacBook Pro. It just feels more solid, more robust. There's nice touches on it, like the light at the front to tell you when it's powered on and the battery's running out. You also have that nice little touch on the tip of the power cord. And look at that Infinity Edge display. It's just wow, just bezel-less. It's just all screen carbon fiber finish i do wish they had the white finish as well but um the carbon still looks amazing and when you open this laptop up yeah nothing compares to it in terms of just how it looks with that all screen display comes in at 18 millimeters thick and you can actually get it at 1.8 kilos or four pounds if you get the small battery but the version i have here is 4.5 pounds or two kilos but it's not so much the weight it's the footprint that makes it so special how compact and small this is because of that bezel-less design. Not only have we stepped into the future with that all display laptop here, we also have with the ports. Two Thunderbolt 3s on the left, one USB Type-C on the right, which you can use for power and display out, and an SD card reader, which so many people want, and that will make so many people happy. And you also get an included adapter to HDMI and USB Type-A, so they've got you covered there. I like this port situation and outputting through that USB Type-C when I was capturing game footage, not one issue. Most of the time when I capture to my capture card, there's one or two games that play up, that USB Type-C display out was faultless. So I know a lot of people want USB Type-A, 
well, at least you got the adapter. I did actually make a video comparing the new one to the old one, why you would want to buy the old one. Maybe check out that video because there are some reasons you might want to buy the old one, including, you know, it will have better battery life slightly. We'll get to that. You get the OLED option. You get ports, USB Type-A, HDMI, and stuff like that. There are reasons why you might want to get the older model. Chief among one of them is the price, because this thing is expensive. The sound on this is amazing. Let's have a listen. All right, now we're going to listen to the audio of this, and I'll use this mic here. Listen on headphones or something like that, because of YouTube compression and just... If you're listening on crappy speakers, it's not going to matter, is it? This mic is a fraction of the price of the Soundhouser mic, the equivalent version of this, and it sounds just as good. So I'll leave a link to that, but we'll listen to some music on this, then we'll compare it to the MacBook Pro. One, two, three, four. All right, let's have a listen. Oh, I believe him. So let's listen to the Mac and have a look at him. He's going to get some action, I'm telling you. Keyboard and trackpad, they're right up there too. The trackpad, oh, I'm a bit on the fence about that. It is good, but yeah, let's go have a look. So when it comes to the keyboard on this, I must say, straight away when I started typing with it, I sort of fell in love with it. It's like a really good keyboard. The keys are bigger. There's less space between the keys now. It feels nice. It has a nice amount of travel and, you know, resting your hands on this, you know, carbon deck, even though it does get fingerprinty, very comfortable to type on and the actual backlight I'll turn off the light the actual backlight looks cool the backlight is really good there's no like bleed it's not blotchy it actually comes through the keys really nicely it's very subtle you actually might not even notice it's on so yeah there it is it's on it's nice very nice backlight. Now, some of the things I don't like about it is this sort of arrow setup. This is like the old Mac. They should go to the inverted T. The placement of that fingerprint sensor, I'm forever touching that thing when I'm trying to touch delete. And it's a problem on the Mac as well. I always touch the Siri thing up there when I'm trying to press delete. Other than that, it's a great keyboard. It's really nice. The display is phenomenal. Now, I only measured like 78% Adobe RGB. Now, it does have this built-in hardware blue light filtering on this display. Now, this is supposed to filter some of the blue light that's harmful for your eyes. Now, this is not supposed to affect the color. Like other versions of this technology, they just cut out blue light and the screen gets yellow or orange. And that's not what this does. When you look at this display, it looks amazing. It's all display. It's color accurate. But why is it only measuring 78% Adobe RGB and not 100% like it should? I have a theory that that built-in blue light filter, which only filters blue light that doesn't affect the colors on screen, but it may be tricking the colorimeter into thinking it's missing blue spectrum because I've calibrated this thing every which way from Sunday. And I think the supporting evidence to that is when I calibrate it, the screen looks pink. So I think it's compensating, adding extra colors that it thinks it's missing in the calibration where really it's not missing. And then the calibration looks pink, looks weird. I think it may have something to do with that. Nevertheless, I will get to the bottom of this, but this display is amazing. It's one of the best displays I've seen on the laptop. There's lots of modes to go through. Touch display as well. It's just a beautiful thing, and I love 16 by 10. The only thing I would say is I can't dim it down enough at night, like in low light situations. Even at zero brightness, it's pretty bright, so I don't know if they can fix that. When it comes to battery life, I'm pleased to say this is one thing I was worried about, but 
don't worry because you're going to get around six hours, maybe more like six and a half hours general use. I went through all the battery runs, real world. This is not obviously video editing or something like this. This is just general use, web surfing, email, productivity, stuff like that. It does have an 86 watt hour battery, 130 watt power supply, which is USB type C. It's not as good as say the MacBook Pro where you get around 10 hours. I will keep you more informed on this. I do think it's slightly less than the last XPS 15 for what it's worth. Now, when it comes to performance, go check out my performance review compared to the Surface Book 3 and MacBook Pro. Go check out my gaming review, but suffice to say, the performance is really good. Given its thermal package, you don't have to worry about thermals because they've nerfed it and they've power limited it at the moment. So thermals aren't going to be an issue at all. Hopefully they give us a bit more power back, but even in this state, Video editing, scrubbing, you can game on it. Yeah, it really performs like you would expect. And for something so thin, light, compact, I have no complaints with performance. Performance is great. You know, it's what you'd expect out of these sort of parts. The latest 10th generation CPUs, 1650 Ti, which is actually quite a bit faster than the old 1650. It's not night and day compared to the last XPS 15. I doubt you'd even notice it, to be perfectly honest. SSD is super fast. It's a Hynex SSD, even though that can change, so I don't even know why I'm testing it. The SD card reader, 250 megabytes per second read, 200 megabytes per second write. So that's super fast. But I think the reason you buy this thing is because you want something super sexy. You want the future of laptops. So when it comes to issues, go check out my man, the Mr. Gaines man. He's had a few issues and he had some real world problems. Go check his channel out. It's awesome and it will inspire you to get fit. Also, lover of tech, my man, my brother. Get some videos up. Dying for some content from my man. I guess one thing to say is it's early BIOS days. This is all going to improve over time. So I wouldn't not buy this because of these issues. I think, you know, judging on my experience with Dell, you know, these will be ironed out within a few months. And none of the issues with deal breakers, backlight bleed, there's stuff all really. All LED LCDs have backlight bleed, but this one was really good. I couldn't see it in dark situations. When I take the power out or put the power in, the screen goes blank for a second, then comes back on. Don't know what that is. Hopefully they fixed that on BIOS. When I closed the lid, the battery drain wasn't there. Well, it did drain a little bit of battery. Like if you left it there for a few hours and you opened it up, it would only use a percentage or two of battery. It wouldn't like issues on other XPS 15s. But a couple of times when I closed the lid and then opened it again, it just rebooted. So they got to fix that. And they got to give us more performance with that BIOS. You know, when I was playing games and it was sometimes being locked to 15 watts on the CPU, come on. It was only like 60 something degrees. They limited the power. Give us some more juice, baby. I want more power. But other than those sort of small things, I don't really have any other issues. And will I keep this? Will I give my Mac the boot? Well, actually, this one's been returned because I'm waiting for the i9. And I also want the Qualcomm Wi-Fi 6 modem, which if I didn't mention, this does have Wi-Fi 6 as well, but it has the Intel version of it. I want the Qualcomm version of it. When that comes out, also, I want to see the XPS 17 before I make a final decision, but stay tuned for my MacBook Pro 16 versus XPS 15, which is the ultimate 15, 16 inch laptop. Stay tuned for that video. Can't wait for the XPS 17. It's a great laptop. You're going to love it and you can have the future now. Catch you in the next one. Tally ho.